Valheim is a crazy fun and addictive game, both solo and with friends. I've been playing it non-stop for the last week, but it is definitely a confusing game. There's a lot going on, and then after a few days, I had a ton of questions about the game. What's up guys, Marty here with another Valheim video. And today, we've got a Valheim guide with some tips, tricks, and some questions that I wanted to answer for you. I've tried to cover a lot of broad areas, as this game is pretty deep, and it's quite, uh, there's a lot of different systems in the game. So I've timestamped the video, Feel free to just go to the questions that you want to know about if you're just trying to fill in certain gaps in your knowledge or if you just don't have time for the full video, you can just jump around to the ones that interest you. I'll be going over the following questions. What do the stars mean above the monsters' heads? Do the monsters get stronger as the days progress? How do you prepare for the base sieges where you get attacked? How do you start mining? How do you get honey to make mead and potions? What, what are the different wood types and what can you make with them? How do you cure poison and how can you farm infinite food? Other than that guys, before we get into it, I post videos both long and short for survival, medieval and fantasy games, how to's, guides, reviews, and if you aren't already subscribed, hopefully I can earn your subscription by the end of this video, or you can just subscribe right now. Let's go. Question 1. Star difficulties above monsters' heads. Each biome in Valheim has different monster types, each hitting harder the further the game you go, so like the meadows, then the black forest, then the swamp, etc, mountain, and so on. In each area, the same mob could have stars above their head. Think of this as a level of the monster. One star seems to have more health and hit harder than no stars, and two stars is even stronger than that. You know, who'd have guessed? It's less noticeable in the early game in the meadows. Think like incrementally, it's smaller. Um, and in the black forest, you don't really notice it that much. But if you're going into something like the swamp and you see a two star monster, it is gonna smash away most of your health, even in bronze armor. And it'll slap you around like a giant from Skyrim. They do seem to drop more loot as well, but it doesn't seem to give you any new items that I've seen so far. So if you're just farming mobs, maybe go for them. If you're just trying to get away, just run from them. Uh, do monsters get stronger as the days go on? Some games like the forest have systems where the more you progress or the more you play, the stronger the environment gets and the more the game turns on you. That is not the case in Valheim. I've got a main base in the meadows, which is the starting area because I'm an absolute wimp and I like to play as safe as possible. Um, after like 50 days, the monsters aren't noticeably stronger at all. Monster difficulty seems locked to the biomes and unless you want a challenge, you need to go there. So, you know, I'm currently going into some of the more advanced areas of the game um, and the monsters are very challenging, but then when I go back home, it's quite safe. It's still as easy as it was at the start of the game. Um, so yeah, maybe consider before you want to make your base next to like a troll spawn or something because it seems linked to the biomes only. Right, base siege events, how do they work? So a tip here for new players, your base will get sieged by monsters constantly. You're going to get a warning that says the forest is moving and then a group of monsters will attack your base. If you're in the meadows, think like five little graylings and a brew or maybe graylings and a couple of shamans will attack you. Um, and they're not, they're not too difficult. But if you've built in somewhere harder, like the Black Forest, or even further out, like the Swamp, they are going to hit really hard. You need to make sure you've got a strong wall. If you've built near like trolls in the forest, you want to be building multiple walls. Um, maybe like, you know, an inner wall around your, your building and all your resources, and then maybe an outer wall around any like farm or cooking or stuff like that. Um, put defenses out like little spikes. Maybe you want to put a tower. I was trying to have a high ground so I could shoot arrows over stuff to get to them so there's no worry of me dying um, protect your portals use doors keep them closed when you're not there and the biggest one here is when you're afk just just log out and then log back in when you get back because so many times i've come back and my base is just overrun with enemies um, the hardest thing to protect is probably a dock because it's out in the ocean but if you could try and wall the entrance to the dock out that seems to work um, or a bit of a different thing you can destroy your boat every time you get home and then rebuild it. Um, up to you how you want to protect that. Next one, how do you start mining? Basically, you need to kill the first boss to get the pickaxe. Anoint all your ore is going to be in the Black Forest. And then you can go mine copper, tin, smelt it into bronze weapons and equipment and unlock that next level of the game with the bronze axe, uh, the bronze weapons, the bronze armor. Um, and get out of those cheap leather that you got at the start of the game. All you need to have done to do this is a dungeon. So a dungeon or two, you'll get the salting cores, which you need to build a smelter. I don't want to go into a ton of detail on how to find the ore and all that sort of stuff, as I've already made a full video on mining, smelting, and smithing. Um, if you're struggling with this, this whole section of finding the ores, forging, I'll link the video below so you can see an in-depth guide. But yeah, they're the basics. Next up, how do you get honey for making mead and potions? So the real staple of a proper Viking is drinking mead. So you better be doing it. And mead can give you health, stamina, and help you in those really tough boss fights. Most of the mead in this game requires a ton of liquid gold. 
honey. <laughs> you're gonna need a lot of this to make potions. One potion, I think, takes like 10 honey. So you're gonna need this on tap. Um, in the small destroyed huts or outposts, mostly in the meadows I've found it, uh, but you can see it in other places, you're gonna find beehives. They're normally like, they're normally like the top corners of the buildings. Uh, destroy them with arrows. You're gonna get attacked by bees a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, and they have a chance of dropping a queen bee. It literally is an item in your inventory. And you can use that to build a beehive back home in your settlement to get that honey uh, constantly being produced. Wood. Wood's quite an interesting one in this game. There's different tree types in the game and each one unlocks a whole new set of items. And it's not obvious at the start that that's, that's a thing. And it's the, the only way you find it out really is you start attacking the certain trees and it will tell you, um, you know, you're not strong enough to attack this tree. Um, so they are tied to progression. So it's important to make sure you chop down one of each tree to see what you can then unlock with that new wood type. So let me go over a few. Let me go over them all actually. There's four types of wood in the game and I found the following. Normal wood is dropped by all trees. When you start, you're gonna find a lot of fir trees. They drop just normal wood. Um, you know, you probably know what to do with that because you've already got it. Fine wood. This is used for advanced ships, poles, furniture, and some really cool things. It's dropped from oak and birch. Then the most obvious one you'll see is a white tree with like black dots on. Um, you're gonna need an upgraded ax, like a bronze ax to break this. Um, I think a bronze ax will do it. Um, and you can find this really easily in the meadows, in the forests, in the meadows. And uh, Fine Axe is going to unlock a lot of cool stuff like portals, um, you can make the better bows, but it's a really important part of the progress. Uh, next up is Core Wood, and that comes from the really, really big pine trees that you find. There's a lot of these in the Black Forest, and that can be used for like building designs. I think you need that for one of the bows as well. Um, it's used for supporting buildings, new weapon can be made out of it, and some other things. Um, if this isn't clear, let me know in the comments, because I could easily make a full video on the different wood types. Um, if people are struggling to to find them or not sure what you can make with them. The only other thing, it's not really wood, but you can get ancient bark in the swamps. Uh, but yeah, it's not a wood type as such. Next big question, can you cure poison? So monsters like the shaman or the slimes in the swamps will poison you and it ticks your health down and can kill you really fast. Luckily, you can create potion resistance potions that last for about 10 minutes. So you need to create the cauldron, which you need tin for, and the fermenter, which needs fine wood and bronze. Luckily, we've just covered wood and bronze in this video. So hopefully you don't need to know where to get that. Hopefully you've got everything you need for those. Um, and then to make the potion, all you need is honey, thistle, necktails, and coal. The only difficult item here that you might not have already found is honey. But again, we've covered that earlier in this video. Um, again, jump around to it if you've jumped here and not seen it. And then once you've fermented it, you can brew it and there you go, you have a poison resistance potion and you're fully protected. You can run straight at shamans through their poison or you can go toe to toe with the dreaded oozes in the swamps. Next up, farming. Once you enter the black forest, you'll start finding things like carrots or maybe even turnips and it's time to put down the viking axe and do some real farm work. If you can make the cultivator tool, you're going to need fine wood and bronze, again covered in the video. Then you just need to turn the soil with the cultivator. Uh, think of it like tilling the ground in like Harvest Moon or something. Uh, and then you just plant the seeds. Uh, there's pretty much free planting, but you need to space them out. Um, and you can cycle this to make infinite food. So for example, a carrot seed, you plant it, you wait a while, it'll grow a carrot. Then you can plant the carrot back in the ground to get multiple carrot seeds and just keep going forever. You, you can literally, if you don't know in the game, you can fill three slots with food. So if you think, if you had, say, a chest just full of carrots from farming them, you would always have one food type covered. And then if you're cooking meat, you can cover the other one. And then if you're finding berries, you can cover the other one. But you will always have carrots filled if you're re-farming the carrots. So it kind of takes a third of that issue out of the game for you. Um, I want to make a full video on farming because there's a few little niche areas that I want to touch on here. Because, yeah, I want to go into more detail on this in another video. Um, and I also want to cover how to domesticate and breed animals for me because that's also quite tricky. So subscribe if you want to see that soon. Hopefully that's covered a lot of the systems in the game that I've struggled with. Hopefully other people have had the same questions and you found an answer here. Um, if you've learned something, like and subscribe would help me out a ton. Um, if you have your own tips, drop them in the comments. There's tons of tips for this game and I could easily have made another video on this. But I wanted to cover the main things that I've been hearing and struggling with myself. If there's anything specific you want me to cover, let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer. Um, I could even make a, an in-depth video on something if something's really rattling you and you don't know how to do it. Um, other than that, guys, thanks so much. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I will catch you in the next one.